CASPI practice test item number three. On this particular question, we actually have four questions in one. What it's asking us to do is to find out whether these inequality statements are true or false. So we're going to have to do four different problems. Now, normally inequality statements aren't that hard to solve unless we have these square roots here. And you might not be able to use a calculator on these tests. And so what I'm going to teach you right now before we solve these is how to estimate a uh, radical that isn't a perfect square. So a little side lesson, estimating radicals. Here we have, I put square root of 1, square root of 4, and square root of 9. These are all perfect square roots, right? Um, we've got 1, 2, and 3. And I space them out um, like that on purpose because in between those, we have other radicals that fit. In fact, there are infinite numbers, but these are the, the whole numbers that go in there. And so if you are, uh, you come across a square root of 2 or square root of 3, um, it's going to be somewhere between, the, the square root of those is going to be somewhere between 1 and 2. And, um, and if you look at the square root of 5 through the square root of 8, that uh, square root is going to be between, somewhere between 2 and 3. And so depending on how close it is to which one, you can kind of estimate where it is. So here's an example, quick example. Square root of 26. We want to think about what two perfect squares is 26 between. And it happens to be 25 and 36. Now, another side note, you should probably know all of your perfect squares. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and so on. Um, anyway, uh, the square root of 25 is 5 and then 6. And so the square root of 26 is going to be somewhere between 5 and 6. And since it's really close to 25, um, you can bet that it's going to be around 5.1 or 5.2. Now, the reason that these estimates are going to help you, and you'll see on these next problems that um, it's going to be very obvious uh, which problem is true and which one is false. So let's take these one at a time. The first one we're going to take, um, we're going to deal with that square root of 37. Okay, and so we pick the two perfect squares that are uh, on either side of that, and it's 36 and 49, and since, uh, which is 6 and 7. And since square root of 37 is real close to 36, it's going to be closer to the 6 than the 7. So I'm going to say about 6.1 or 6.2. Now, if you put that 6.1 or 6.2 into the square root 37, you can see that it's saying that that's less than 5 and a fourth. Now, that is not true. 6.1 is larger than 5 and a fourth. So that answer is false. Let's take a look at the second one. The second one, let's focus on that square root 3. And that's between the square root of 1 and square root of 4, which is 1 and 2. So it's going to be somewhere between 1 and 2. And since it's closer to 4, it's going to be, oh, somewhere around 1.7. Okay, so we're going to keep that... Uh, off to the side there. Now let's look at 3 times pi. We know that pi is around 3.14. So let's go off to the side. 3 times 3.14 is approximately, well it's more than 9. That's the way I put it, plus 9. It's, it's more than 9. Now let's look at 3 times the square root of 3. Now we determine that the square root of 3 is 1.7 or thereabouts. And that, if you multiply it out, that's going to be less than 6. So, just looking at 3 times 3.14 and 3 times 1.7, you can see which one is going to be larger. The 3 pi will be larger. And indeed, that is what the inequality says. So this is a true statement. Now we're going to look at the third one. We'll look at that square root 5. And that's between square root 4 and square root 9 and which would be between 2 and 3 and it's closer to 4 so I'm guessing it's going to be about 2.2 .2 or thereabouts and uh, if you replace the square root of 5 with 2.2 .2, you can see that is larger than 5 sevenths which is less than 1 so that is a true statement it is greater than 5 sevenths 
Now we're going to look at the last one, and we're going to look at that square root 10, and we're going to figure this out all out onto the side here. So square root of 10 is between the square root of 9 and square root of 16, somewhere between 3 and 4, and it's really close to 9, so it's going to be about 3.1. Now, what they want you to do is they, want, they have 15 divided by square root 10. Now, since uh, 15 divided by approximately 3.1, um, if you did that, if you just divided it by 3, it's about 5. It's going to be under 5, actually. And so, is 5 greater than 8.38? No, not even close. So this one is a false answer. All right, I hope that helped.